So, uh, when it comes to Mahatma Phule, it's still by the mainstream uh, uh, academic world, uh, slowly, gradually, the, the picture is changing, but still considered to be uh, particular. Uh, Ranadi is also portrayed as reformist. Uh, Dayananda Saraswati is also portrayed as reformist. Uh, Raja Ramon Roy is also portrayed as a reformist. So, if everybody is reformist, then uh, there is no need for revolution or revolutionary thought. But why we are writing the word revolutionary when it comes to Mahatma Phule and Dr. Baba Ambedkar? First, let me thank uh, DSF and thank you for coming. Uh, I know that uh, it's, it's slightly late and I don't have the same stamina as Professor uh, Bagare. Actually, I, ha I had come to listen to him because in Maharashtra, uh, he's one of the important scholars uh, on this topic. Uh, and particularly when I recently started reading in Marathi, uh, uh, the books that uh, I read uh, on Phule Ambedkar tradition, uh, he is considered to be one of the prominent intellectuals uh, in that area. Uh, to come back to the topic, see the topic is uh, intellectual tradition of Phule Ambedkar and its revolutionary horizon. Uh, so the word revolutionary and intellectual, these are two very important words because as we see that, you know, uh, uh, I keep underlining the fact that uh, 20 years ago, uh, even Dr. Bhavasar Mambedkar was a particular in this campus and become a universal and even by the establishment and there are series of programs organized uh, to celebrate his birth anniversary, to remember his death anniversary. But uh, about Mahatma Phule, uh, it's still a particular. The distinction that uh, Professor Bagade made in the beginning, particular and universal and what it means. So intellectual is, when somebody is an intellectual, it's a universal fact. And somebody who is just a feeling sentient being is a particular fact. And when somebody is knowingly, unknowingly, consciously, unconsciously reduced to the to the realm of sentient beings or just feeling entities, they are not regarded as intellectuals capable of a universal valency. And so, uh, when it comes to Mahatma Phule, it's still by the mainstream uh, uh, academic world, uh, slowly, gradually, the, the picture is changing, but still considered to be uh, particular. And the second important word in this articulation is revolutionary horizon. And in order to explain what it means, because actually when we are speaking, it's very important to define our terms, our words. Uh, revolutionary horizon, but he is portrayed in our popular imagination as a reformist, isn't it? Because uh, uh, Ranadi is also portrayed as reformist. Uh, Dayananda Saraswati is also portrayed as reformist. Uh, Raja Ramon Roy is also portrayed as a reformist. So if everybody is reformist, then uh, there is no need for revolution or revolutionary thought. But why we are writing the word revolutionary when it comes to Mahatma Phule and Dr. Baba Ambedkar? In order to understand this, one has to understand the intellectual, social, cultural atmosphere of the early 19th century or 19th century and to see to, to, see to what extent it is still valid even today. Uh, if it is not valid, then we can say that it's a very particular fact, uh, the birth, the work, and the writings of Mahatma Phule. So, uh, 1827 uh, his birth and 1890 his death. So, 1827, right, up, right nine, after, uh, nine years after the fall of Peshwa rule, because Peshwa rule 1818. But the political apparatus, colonial political apparatus that you see in Maharashtra doesn't necessarily mean that uh, social change because the uh, social atmosphere which was there under Peshwa rule, because Peshwa rule is notorious for uh, implementing rigid uh, what we call Brahminical theodicy. Brahminical theodicy means uh, right of Brahminical jurisdiction, way of uh, uh, conceiving the world and it has its own uh, axioms and it was so rigid that the caste system that you can you know read uh, 
poem by Mukta Sarve, one of the students of Mahatma Phule. See, when, because the anecdotal understanding about Mahatma Phule in public, uh, popular imagination that Unone Mahilao Kile Pahili School Shuru Ki Hai, Untouchables Kile Pahili anecdotal understanding, Fit Unka Jo works Hai, Fit then uh, organization that he started, Satya Shodaks. When we understand him comprehensively, then we would understand whether he is a philosopher or a particular fact or a universal fact. All right. But what is the atmosphere? Because, you know, uh, our friend said that the 19th century is considered as, a, as the age of enlightenment. But if you discuss about the 19th century, the atmosphere in which Mahatma Phule uh, worked, wrote, um, uh, interacted, negotiated, uh, revolted. Uh, so some people say it's an age of renaissance. Some says enlightenment, some says reform. So the words reform, renaissance, enlightenment, are they, can we use them interchangeably? We can't use them interchangeably. They mean certain things. It means that there were set of paradigms coexisting at the same time in the 19th century. Some paradigms were trying to rehabilitate something that they thought something has been deformed, so let us reform it. So they can be regarded as reformist. So Brahmo Samaj or Arya Samaj, all these people were or can be described as reformers because they were trying to reform something that was deformed and they were trying to bring back what they call the true message of Vedic civilization, isn't it? Renaissance means rehabilitation was of something that was born at some point. But enlightenment is something different. Enlightenment is that the birth of reason, the age of reason, that the sole criteria, the sole ground which you are going to negotiate, evaluate, engage with is your reason. And that is bit of uh, public reason at the same time individual reason. So, do we see the birth of public reason in the 19th century in Maharashtra particularly, in India in general? Then we have to see because when you read Mahatma Phule's writing, he makes it very clear that, that the dominant paradigm that is regulating Indian space at that time is, in, is misologist. Misologist means hatred of reason, cannot reason and incapable of constituting public sphere. So, that society of the 19th century didn't have what is necessary in order to articulate these modern values, these democratic values, that is public sphere. And therefore, the, the book Sarvatrik Satya Dharma. So, here is the important word Satya, Satya Shodak, the truth, the idea of truth, the notion of truth, how he understands. Because every paradigm has some un uh, uh, implied notion of truth that one has to posit doesn't exist but one has to posit that's what we call horizon so it means that in our social space there is not a single horizon but multiple horizons koi bageshwar ki taraf le ja raha hai to koi aur le ja rahe sab horizon si hai so today do you see any qualitative change between the misologist atmosphere that existed in the 19th century and that exists today that for, for an intellectual debate, for public sphere, number of people who are interested in this public sphere, where reason is the only tool with which you are engaging with the other in good faith, and somewhere people are voluntarily accepting their servitude and sitting in lakhs. And who are organizing that? A political apparatus. Isn't it? You go to Maharashtra, the rallies of all these... Uh, some Mishra, some Bageshwars, like all this, this political apparatus is organizing. What kind of theodicy is being inculcated that goes against the revolutionary horizon propounded by Mahatma Phule and Dr. Baba Simon Bedkar. So right now, so there is continuum. So when I say that there are multiple horizons, but we can categorize those multiple horizons in terms of what we call libertarian horizon and liberty side horizon. These two categories means something that is anti-liberty, anti-freedom. As Professor Bagade pointed out, that uh, the horizon that is uh, the, 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 the philosophical paradigm that is dominant does not posit, does not accept the notion of freedom. 
in this material world and it is made sacred by what we call dharma shastras you can you can engage with any learned person and ask him do you posit the idea of freedom in your theodicy he has to because it, in what we call in marathi uh, atma sattavadi the only entity true and capable of freedom means moksha is atma body has to be necessarily unfree ye theodicy hai jo aapko kadam kadam pe iske through series of uh, sanskars aap pe inculcate ho raha hai so the see, point is that uh, injustice is something universal injustice as a notion and as reality is something universal so what is particular then what is particular the structures are particular so the kind of the nature of injustice that you see in the 19th century and that is being articulated in the works of mahatma phule and then later on uh, in the works of dr baba saheb ambedkar dr baba saheb ambedkar had three uh, teachers uh, buddha kabi and mahatma phule there is a reason for that it was not just a partisan partisan choice there is an intellectual uh, what we call taking forward that legacy and so, so uh when when you see uh that uh the, 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 the relation between mahatma phule and dr baba saheb ambedkar and uh what is trying to articulate is that reform is not revolutionary and that that these two uh, paradigms that are because people do uh do describe at times dr uh, uh, mahatma phule particularly that he was a, a kind of a uh, missionary agent but when you look at the genealogies I mean genealogies that you will see in the works of mahatma phule both indigenous indigenous and exogenous because of course thomas paine is exogenous means the 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 ideas that you know ideas of modernity ideas of uh, democracy they are coming from there but at the same time there is indigenous uh, genealogy also so uh, there is a there is a con- there is a continuity there is a, a principle of identity between his writing his works uh, and and there is because he says that uh, when i said that uh, the, the point that i was trying to articulate that this the, the notion of just injustice is there but the structures are particular and what are the particular structures in india all right so uh when we you, you have to do the diagnosis of the particular structures in india am i making any sense or you see the because uh for that you have to understand indian social realities in under, in order to understand the structures of injustice in india let us let us use a metaphor of disease okay if the disease is of certain type of a particular region you can't just import a medicine from abroad all right and that's what dr uh, mahatma phule and dr baba sambet did they did diagnose that the problem because karl marx and his kind of you know hegel uh, also did that indian space was incapable of dialectical movement means incapable of the very notion of freedom jahan pe dialectical movement sambhav hi nahi hai freedom sambhav hi nahi hai so the orientalist for them it was white man's burden and because the, what takes their access one has to ask this question that they say that indian space is incapable of dialectical movement incapable of the very idea of freedom and freedom democratizes what we call equality or equal freedom so these things according to this orientalist intellectuals that somehow or directly or indirectly supported the colonial enterprise and they were right so long as they but they were right in their claim but they were not they were not right uh, in their uh, uh, in their ability to furnish the sources they made it as if they know the ex- exhaustive account of indian intellectual traditions the only tradition that was a brahminical theodicy that they were referring to when this orientalists they were talking that uh, even in french uh, sociologists at that time louis dumo he said that indian man indian man is indian human being is homo hierarchus 
उसको ऊंच नीच के अलावा कुछ दिखाई नहीं देता वाई वर दे सेंग दैट देर अंडरस्टैंडिंग वॉज टेक्चुअल देयर अंडरस्टैंडिंग वॉज नॉट फर्स्ट हैंड सो this tradition of what we call you know this libertarian tradition which is there in a very subterranean ma manner but sometimes it does come up with that's what uh, the uh, lecture of professor bagadi was in the afternoon revolution and counter revolution if mahatma phule is a reformist that the establishment wants to sanitize the radical content then we are not actually remembering uh, the works and life of mahatma phule because when i study mahatma phule or dr baba saheb ambedkar my methodology is plain that are there three components first is the critical scientific understanding of the existing reality first and what are the methods with which that that understanding is there in a particular author or particular particular uh, intellectual second is is there any possibility or any proposition of a horizon and third is methodology to get to that horizon and i see all these three parameters in the works of mahatma phule and dr baba saheb ambedkar i see the axiomatic or the horizon that is what uh, he calls ekamay lok ekamay lok means that one common human humanity but what we see in reality is fragmented hierarchically arranged humanity or multiple humanities uh, incapable of interacting with each other that's what we see in reality so this horizon and what is his uh, uh, the, uh, the methodology education because if his revolutionary horizon is ekamay lok one common humanity then then that becomes the yardstick with which you measure, measure the existing existing empirical reality and that existing empirical reality in a graded manner to use uh, dr baba saheb ambedkar's terms people are negated in a graded manner and the most negated are women and shudra ati shudra therefore his first gesture was to educate educate his own wife and start school for women and then for untouchables wo apni jati ke liye school nahi khola usne you understand so the point is that there is a coherence that's what we call organic intellectual that is what we call organic intellectual and uh, and the most important thing is that the condition for the possibility of democracy in india that is his revolutionary project actually is the constitution of public sphere so the constitution the very condition of possibility of democracy is constitution of public sphere and that that is what he calls uh, uh, sarvatrik satya dharma sarvajanik satya dharma and that is you can constitute public sphere with education and that is the destruction of education that we are witnessing through new education policy so the debate that we are engaged right now is not a debate of mahatma phule of the 19th century it's a current debate why people do not want to discuss mahatma phule in good faith seedha wo abroad se koi medicine laate hai because it one can be very uh, comfortable and be progressive that is the problem of indian intellectual class and mahatma phule's writing makes them very uncomfortable so does dr baba saheb ambedkar's writing like you no know, when we started that you know what is particular and universal philosophy is universal particular is just set of feelings and set of sufferings and actually i am i'm teaching a french philosophy considered to be in the eyes of uh, academia the philosophy aur mujhe zyada tar talk pe bulaya jata hai mahatma phule dr baba saheb ambedkar ye jo hai ye actually because one wants to be good even i'm i'm now critiquing again that's uh, that's what i do often our progressive liberal class they want to reform what they want to reform they had to get either into that radical horizon or they should just say that hum aise hi hain bas shield kar rahe hain logo ko aap shield kar rahe hain you are sanitizing they what you want to reform the theodicy is profoundly anti democratic 
the organic one has to engage with cultural critic cultural critic bina ke aap progress kaise ho sakte at home you have series of cultural practices that teach you anti democratic ideas aur yahan pe aakar aap kalmas ki baat karte ho to ye jo hai abhi matlab theek hai dheere dheere sudharte hai log usi ko usme reform reform hona zaruri hai but the point is that i see because i teach french philosophy here but i study mahatma phule dr baba saheb ambedkar and i write in marathi यहाँ पे अंग्रेजी में बात करनी पड़ेगी अलग स्पेस है यहाँ का तो ये प्रॉब्लम है कि द वन हु आर हु हैव द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ एंगेजिंग और काउंटरिंग दिस बागेश्वर एंड दिस मिश्राज वो है कि अंग्रेजी में पेपर लिखे जा रहे लिखो और बट ऑर्गेनिकली एंड व्हेन यू डू एंगेज विथ योर ओन कल्चरल लाइफ एंड कॉल स्पेड स्पेड द मैन हु कॉल स्पेड स्पेड either he is re described as reactionary it's not because in uh, private talks i know how people talk about mahatma phule reactionary inhone padha hi nahi hai kabhi kabhi majmuri mein political correctness mein wo ho jata hai because it it makes us deeply uncomfortable reading mahatma phule and dr baba sahib without reading anecdotal mein acha hai political project bhi ho jata hai sab kuch ho jata hai but we are dishonest and we are unfree to use Dr. Bhav said, "I'm better to watch because I I kind of you know straddle between these spaces, uh, and uh, again, OBC होने के नाते इधर उधर सब घूमने को मिल जाता है मुझे. तो ये जो OBC का space है वहाँ से मुझे सब हमाम में दिख जाते हैं मुझे. So the point is that one has to really kind of you know do that nasty task of making people uncomfortable. उधर के लोगों तो मतलब वो तो ठीक है परेशानी होता है." Uh, लेकिन जो है जो अपने आप को गार्डेड करके चलते हैं प्रोग्रेसिव करते हैं वो कितने प्रोग्रेसिव है हिंदुस्तान में यूनिवर्सल टॉपिक के लिए उनको शरद बाबेकर ने याद आता है ऑफकोर्स मैं तो महात्मा फुले और डॉक्टर बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर की फिलोसफी के लिए बात रखूंगा यूनिवर्सल टॉपिक टॉपिक मतलब उन्होंने वो रेडिफाइड ऐसे करके रखे हैं तो आई एम श्योर लाइक यू नो ट्वेंटी ईयर्स अगो आई हैव सीन एटीन ईयर्स आई हैव सीन हेयर इवन डॉक्टर बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर वॉज अ पर्टिकुलर datum here and after 20 years i'm sure mahatma phule will also become a universal fact because you can't stop that people are getting educated kab tak chhipaoge cultural critic to hoga hi fir aap kaise usko handle karte hai kaise good faith mein hote hai kaise bad faith mein hote the point is that are we capable of constituting public sphere and what we call public reason public reason ye to matlab it's not like a, uh, your truth against my truth and that is what his methodology was education not in a instrumental sense of the term engineer banana hai mba uh, banana hai woh nahi tha his idea of education is that one has to first create public sphere jo hindustan mein na ke barabar hai yahan pe series of private spaces hai jahan pe hierarchically the way uh, bagade sir said we are structured a priori our identities are structured a priori there is no suspension of that structure and suspension of that structure that we call isonomia is is was there or so in a very uh, underground manner it is there but it should be there publicly mandated but that is being now stigmatized ki ye discuss karte ye baatein karte ye sawal uthate hain to abhi ujjain mein kya ho raha hai destruction of education that is public sphere everywhere education in new education policy is reduced to instrumentality aap khali ek spare part ki tarah apna kuch kaam karo sawal mat pucho and then that brahminical theodicy as and why people get so uncomfortable with the word brahminical i just fail to understand aap sach mein intellectual ho ya aapne padha nahi hai sham karo yaar matlab padh lo ye kis liye mahatma phule ne shabd use kiya hai kya unka look at you know the kind of initiatives he has taken If you see initiatives he has taken, then you would understand what man he was. Because I was reading uh, uh, Shirwadkar on uh, Vichar Vishwa. There, I fail to understand how they how they read it. I mean, come on. So, like for example, uh, after uh, like fifteen twenty years of detour, I am coming back to Marathi space that way. And when I read, he is how intellectual he is. 
इसीलिए संख्या कम रहती है एनी वे आई विल नॉट टेक मच टाइम यू आर वेरी एग्जॉस्टेड आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू एग्जॉस्ट यू फर्दर थैंक यू वेरी मच